Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77. We are on Tinker World again. And as usual, I'm going to start this off with another mining session. So, here we go. We're going to go on down to the mine. You know the drill. Um, let's just do diamonds. Let's just worry about diamonds this time. So, leave me a comment with the number of diamonds you think I'm going to have in this and uh, mining session, and we'll see what happens, okay? So, we're going to start another branch, and I'll let you know on the other side. I'm not going to do a, a time lapse because I have uh, some other projects I want to do for this video. So I'm just going to do, uh, do the mining session and come back to you and let you know how it went. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm back from the mining session. It wasn't too great as far as diamonds are concerned. So here we go. You ready? The result for the diamonds for this mining session is 23 diamonds. We're about to get started on the project for today, but first I want to say, hey, if you're liking these videos, you're liking Tinker World, please click that like button. Can't stress that enough. That's really important. So what we're going to do for today is we're going to do something that I need for my elytra. With elytras, you usually use fireworks to get some propulsion through the sky. Fireworks take paper, which you get from sugarcane, and gunpowder, which you get from creepers. So we're going to make a combination farm. I'm going to put it right beside the the uh, iron farms here. And why am I missing one? That looks very strange. There it is. Just was rendered distance. Okay. But we're going to make another farm right beside here. That's going to be where the um, combination farm is. Basically, it's going to have something very similar to Ilmango's design for the creepers, where water dispenses and pushes them out to the side. But then around the edge of the thing, we'll have all of the... Uh, sugar cane. So that way the sugar cane and creepers will drop. They'll both be picked up by the same system. So that'll be really cool. First thing I'm going to do though, I'm going to go over this island. I'm going to uh, clear off this little patch of land, make sure it's nice and flat, and then I'm going to start to figure out uh, location based on measurements and things. And then we're going to start up making what we need. So let me get over there and start clearing some land. For the first part of this farm, we're going to work on a hopper minecart drop-off location. So what I need first, I need to have a chest where I'm going to be dumping items. There it is. Wow, isn't it glorious? Anyway, what you're going to have on top of that is you're going to have a basically a hopper. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare what's coming out of that hopper. Let me make some stone brick here. We're going to compare what's in that hopper. And if there's anything in it, we will basically say, hey, don't, uh, don't launch the uh, hopper minecart. Let me get some of this other stuff out of here. I need a little more space here. So it comes out of here. Okay, we're going into a block that has a torch on top, and basically this torch then has a block which gets powered, and then we throw in a repeater right here and say, hey, go, and what happens there is that then we have a block, and on this block right here where we would have a powered rail. And basically right now the powered rail says, hey, there's, you know, I've got something here so I'm not going to function. Let me see if I can get up so you can see this better. See that? It's on. Now if something gets in the hopper here, let's put a stack of stone. Oop, not onto the ground. Stack of stone in the hopper. It turns the rail off. So the minecart will come along, hit this, start unloading and stop. It would not be sent. But as soon as the hopper here gets empty, this will activate which will immediately send the hopper or the hopper minecart back out. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to basically create the pickup area and we'll do that right now and then we're going to make the next part which is adding the kill mechanism and uh, water flow. So let's get this started. Alright, so there it goes. Let's put some stuff out here in its way. Here we go. Okay, so it should pick that up. Stops, unloads, and goes. Now it's going to pick up the next one. Same idea. See? Picks it up, so it'll come back, it'll stop when it needs to unload. So that's really great. So that works just fantastic. Here we go again. One more test. I like watching it. And there it goes. So that system's working great. So the next thing I need to do, the magma layer and the water streams. So as you can see here, I have created water places where the water will go. And I don't have the water in right now because it's just too dangerous having water right now. But this has got eight blocks wide so when water will be pushing things over into the center here where we have the magma which will kill the creepers same thing on this side now if I draw some of this other stuff in here 
You can see it's all there, it's kind of stacked up, but in a couple seconds it disappears. And that's because the, the um, Hopper Minecart has picked up the items and brought them over here, hopefully. Looks like it already did and dropped them off. There they are. Oh, no, wait, here they are. That's from a previous test. See, there they are. So it's working just like I wanted. So the next step is going to be trying to, first of all, make the creeper platforms and make those. And we'll do that next. And then after that, we're going to figure out the um, sugarcane part. So let's do the creeper part first. The idea for the creeper part of this farm is actually very simple. And what we have are these layers, like they're shaped like diamonds. You can see this here. And there are going to be a series of these going up in the sky, okay? Now, each layer will have on the floor an observer. And below that observer is a dispenser that will dispense water. So if you can imagine, there's layers above here. And if the water gets dispensed, hear those clicks? What it's doing is it's sending a signal to the dispenser that's on the layer below it. Okay? If I go down here, I can try to show you. See, there's another dispenser. So if I go over here... Let me put a bucket in here. There's a bucket of water. I should probably get some more ladders here so I can get up. <laughs> okay. Now when I put water down, you notice how there is no water flowing down this layer here. If I hit this, you can see it triggered the water to flow on the layer below it. Let me go get that water source here. I need some depth strider on my boots. And there we go. And the water below it's done. So you can see how easy that is. Okay. Now I did hear some things going on with the trap doors. I just fell into the pit. But that's okay. Now the trap doors, what's that about, you ask? Well, what that happens with the trap doors, if I can get up there to show you, um, I'll just do it from right here, is that it changes the total distance between the blocks. Normally this is about two blocks worth, but it just shaves a little bit off. And what that does is prevents zombies and skeletons from spawning villagers zombie villagers and witches and that sort of thing the only thing that will be able to spawn here would be spiders which i really don't care about and creepers so what will happen is they'll spawn on here every so often the water then will push them off out into the stream here the streams will push them down into this area where they will be killed and once they are killed the piss items will be picked up that's the goal of this so right now i've got to make a bunch of these layers a lot of trap doors and get this whole system up and running so that it's working right. And then we'll work on the next steps. So let me do that right now. It took me a lot longer than I thought to work it. Um, Thomas was on, as you can see. He's asking if I finally solved the problem. I was having lots of issues. Uh, but we finally got it working. So what happens is the water streams will eventually come out. And the mobs will drop. And I'll go on to down here and burn up and die. And we'll get the drops. So that was rough but we got it working that's what's going on in the center of this big box that i'm going to be making around the sides though i'm going to be making some sugarcane farms basically the sugarcane will then push out into the water and it flows into the center so that's what i gotta do next and i'm going to do a layer so you can kind of see it and then i will uh, explain what it's doing and then we'll go on from there i'm on the camera account right now just to kind of show you what one section will look like Basically here, we have all of these slime blocks which are attached to a sticky piston over here. And when this system fires, I'm going to be running a line down which will trigger these to fire and push out. So when they push out, they'll, anything that the um, sugarcane that's grown will be pushed out into the water and also three thrown down. So I've got to build this all the way up on all four sides and then that should be pretty good. So let me start working on getting at least one side done so we can see how that looks. And then get that hooked up with the redstone. And we'll see what it's producing. Alrighty then. Well, I have some good news and bad news. Good news is I've created up one wall. As you can see, this is where all of the various sugarcane is. It works really well. There's a, I have a lever up top. Which I'll show you that later. But I have a lever up top right now instead of having a timer. And when I clip that lever, let's see if I can show you the, uh, the other area here. It's kind of hard to see. But basically, I've got a series of pistons uh, with redstone blocks. And they push down. There's a spider in there. He's already doing some stuff. But anyway, the, these series of, they push down and cause um, the redstone signal to push out, 
which causes the sugar cane to flow off. Works really well. So that's good news. I got one of them done. Bad news. Uh, <laughs> a couple of players, Thomas and Pippo or Pipo or Pipu or whatever, however you say it, um, we were all running around in the end looking for some end cities, and I got hit by a couple of Ender Endermen and died. And so, yeah, I died. Lost all my stuff. I have nothing. Poor, poor, poor Tinker. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have to get some more stuff ready to go, and then I'm going to start working on this some more. But I want to let you know that I'm a little bit uh, behind because of <laughs> some adventuring mishaps. I finished the farm. I'm not quite happy with it, but I'll show you what it looks like here. We'll go sailing around. Big tower. And I need to tweak to some of the timings. You'll see the uh, pistons here fire every so often, which will cause the slime to go into... Oop. Rest in peace. Anyway, the slimes will, uh, slime blocks will push in and get the, um, whatchamacallit, the sugar cane to fall. Okay, and its boat is just not working for me today. So, um, yeah, this is going really well. Uh, the problem with this farm is because I added the sugar cane around the edges, it allows other things to spawn besides creepers and spiders. So, yeah, that's not the best part here. So I'm getting, some, you can hear some witches and things like that in here. So I'm getting some skeletons and zombies. Great rate on sugarcane. Not so much on gunpowder right now, but I haven't really set up an AFK platform for it. So I need to do that too. So I need to figure out a place to do the AFK. Also, this method here, this cart, takes a long time to unload. And I think I may be missing drops. Well, that one was quick. Figures I would say that and it would be quick. But it, I've seen where it's been really slow to unload. So I'm thinking I might have to make a couple of these uh, systems. Uh, maybe maybe a couple of uh, minecarts going into the same chest thing. So what I'm trying to figure out now is I'm going to figure out, well I'm going to go help um, Pipu with, uh, let me tell him I'm going to be there. Uh, help him with nether work apparently. So let me go do that and we'll see what's up with it. Well I went to go help Pipo. Pipo uh, died. He was doing some work in the nether trying to gather resources and died and needed help to get his equipment. Unfortunately, his uh, equipment despawned, so he's now wearing some gold armor and some gold pieces while he gets re-equipped. So there's nothing I can really help him with right now. So I'm going to head back to the base and we're going to start to work on some of that storage facility to store out the materials from our new farm. I decided that uh, I really should, while I was in the nether, go over to the, to the stronghold, come to the end, and start to do some enchanting of the gear that I made. So I've enchanted this sword. Actually, this sword was one that I had from before. It does not have... Um, it has sweeping edge and smite, but it really needs uh, sharpness instead of smite. So eventually we'll have a different sword, but this was my backup sword. I kept this in my ender chest. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get some experience, and then once I get enough, to, like get to level 30 or so, I'll run over here and enchant an item, see what I get, and I'll keep on doing that until each one's got some enchantments. Then I'll probably head back. I have some books back at the uh, base camp that I can use to make some better things, so we'll see how that goes. But for right now, I just gotta get to level 30, start enchanting. It takes a little bit, but this works. I get experience for it. We get the chance to uh, get an Enderman head, which I haven't seen yet. Let's go look. Lots of pearls. No Enderman head. So let's keep on doing this. I'll get some enchantments done. And I'll show you the enchantments uh, that I do get when I do this, okay? So uh, here we go. Let's see what the enchantments I received were. The axe, I received unbreaking three and efficiency three. Eh, not great. Diamond shovel got unbreaking three and efficiency four. That's not bad. But I already had the pick. For my armor, the helmet got unbreaking three. Eh, not great. Chest play had fire protection three and unbreaking three. Uh, leggings, Blast Protection 4, Diamond Boots, Fire Protection 4, and Depth Strider. So it's a good base start. Now what I can do is go back and get the books and figure out exactly how I want to tweak these and then keep on going from there. Let's see if we found an, an, a good Enderman Head. There's a very, very rare chance when you kill the Enderman, you get Enderman Head. Let me kill some more of these really quick. Just one last chance. Let's see if we get anything. Besides a lot of experience. 
Hmm. A lot of drops are coming in. No Enderman head. Okay, well, let's head back to the base. We're going to work on that storage area for the new farm that we just made. My intention was to make a really nice uh, sorting system for this, sort out the items and get everything ready to go. But then I remember that, you know, I got the iron farm here and some other things. So I just want to rethink my storage solution that I come up with. So instead, what I decided to do was just do the typical uh, chest stack. You can see it just goes all the way down, all the way down here. And this is where all the items are. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go AFK. And I'm going to go and see how what the spawns are like, how it works. You can hear some spiders dying up there. So I know it's working, but I want to see what kind of rates we get. So I'm just going to go AFK, and I'm going to go and see what's going on with that. So I want to get this video out also. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video here. And I'm going to get it all put together, get it up on YouTube, and then we'll see in the next video what we see as far as the rates and that sort of thing. So I think that's it for today. If you like this video, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them in the comment section. I figure there'll be some for this video. And if you'd like to be notified of videos I produce, please subscribe to this channel. The little bell icon, will, if you click it, will uh, make sure you get notified all the time. So that's about it. Um, I want to thank you for staying with me today. This has been uh, really stressful making this thing, but it's finally done. <sighs> okay, well have a great day everybody. Bye-bye.